Now, I'm going to introduce you to this doctrine of elision. And I want to tell you why this is so important. And you know, each of us have probably been in arguments before where we've loved to use the other person's words against them. Now, y'all are probably all kinder and gentler than I am, but, but I love that as a lawyer. And in 2001, the, you know, the Tennessee Supreme Court applied the doctrine of elision to strike down our abortion laws. And the doctrine of elision says that only if a provision in a statute or a statutory scheme, if there are multiple statutes, can be separated from the rest of an unconstitutional part, then only can the rest of the law be upheld. In other words, it's kind of like if you have a cancer. There are times you can go in and remove the cancer, but there are other times you have to say, you know, it is so entwined on your kidney or your lung, or I don't know that much about it, but we're going to have to take the whole thing. And that's what the Supreme Court is saying. There are times when you can say, you know, if we took that provision out, the legislature would have still enacted it. They would have still said, yeah, this will work. But if, if it's so integral to the whole of the thing that that part comes out, the whole fabric unravels. And that's what they said in our abortion law. When we said, look, a doctor needs to sit down and tell the woman about these things, and the court said, that's unconstitutional, require a doctor to do that. But we believe that was so important to what the legislature wanted to do that we're not going to uphold the statute and let a secretary or a nurse do it. The whole thing falls. Now, do you know what happened in the Obamacare decision this summer? It was an issue, was it not? In which many people were saying, if the court construes the words to mean what they mean on their face, all of Obamacare falls down. Because these subsidies were central to the whole scheme. So the Supreme Court, realizing this whole thing would fall apart, what did they do? They said, we got to interpret these words to mean something than other than what they would appear on their face or the whole law is going to fall because we can't apply the doctrine of illusion to save it. So taking that and looking at the laws we just passed, do you think the General Assembly meant two parties to include two men or two women when they passed that law decades ago? Their activity was criminal. No. Or put it another way, decades ago, would the legislature have enacted the laws we have now if at that time they thought it was going to mean two men and two women? The clear answer is no. Let me back up. In other words, what I'm suggesting to you is this. Every law in the state of Tennessee related to marriage may well be unconstitutional. 